riveting start to the stream. I know I'm just going to go and um, find my phone and just uh, wait for a second for it to fire up and uh, maybe someone to get here and then uh, we'll be right back. So 30 seconds, guys, go grab a drink or something. To be honest with you, I don't even know if I am live right now. There's no one in the chat. If I see someone pop in, then I guess I'll know. I wonder if I can see myself online at all. This would be like Inception, right? <clears throat> Boom, there we go, we're live now. Good, all right folks, so um, let's get going. Uh, sorry for the slow start, just needed to suss some stuff out. <clears throat> Firstly, I was gonna go play Age of Sigma today, make a battle report, but um, I haven't been well again, believe it or not. <clears throat> so, well, I mean, I've been well enough, but there's something odd happening. So I went out bush uh, last week um, and the last probably two days of bush was out doing sort of recon driving around all the bush tracks and um, Showing some people around some forbidden areas of the Australian output the outback um, <clears throat> In the last two days, I got this really dry cough that just came on just a cough and only a cough And then came back to town and ever since then My chest has been really tight and I've had this dry cough as well, but then nothing else. Oh, in the last two or three days, probably like some fatigue. Um, quite a bit actually, like I, I sort of would get up in the morning, go to school, drop off, do whatever, come back. And then I'm like, oh fuck, like I just need to lay down again and have another another little sleep. Um, and then by the afternoon, I kind of need to have another one. That's really abnormal for me. And then yesterday with um, CrossFit workout as well, by the end of the second round, so it was something like um, a thousand meters on the, um, concept two bike into 500 meters on the rower into 500 meters on the ski and then repeat that four rounds of that <clears throat> you had nine minutes per round so the quicker you get that all done the more rest you have between rounds whereas if you go real slow there's no rest sort of thing by the time I got finished the second one I was like something's wrong something's not right and went and vomited but I didn't vomit because I was you know so like it was so such a hard workout that I pushed myself to the limit that I was, I was, you know, need to vomit. That wasn't real. Um, it was like, I was just going crazy and pacing myself just a normal workout. I would have normally smashed that sort of workout and, um, yeah, halfway through just, just bleh, no good at all. So <coughs> see, that's the sort of dry cough, I'm not coughing anything up or anything like that, but it, my chest feels like I've got asthma, believe it or not. And I don't have asthma. Right. So anyways, so I thought, um, the person I was going to go play the game against, he's got um, two little babies, two newborn babies. It was going to be Luke from Beers of Sigma, but I thought I better not bring, if I've got some weird sort of virus, I better not bring that into his house and make his two little red coat babies sick. Um, that would be a very unfriendly thing to do. So we're just going to do our, um, have a Red Bull for a bit of a pick me up, do a bit of an afternoon stream and um, go from there now where did my little chat window go i can't even see if anyone's um anyone's in here at the moment whatever i'll work it out as we go <clears throat> so what i want to do is i guess um i saw the 
news of fourth edition had come out, well, was coming out, and um, I started off just reviewing it, and then I got real negative, right? It was sort of all doom and darkness again, and just the old, I'd like, I'm, I still got PTSD from when the first Gaben book came out. Like, the, like, successive launches of Zench being ridiculous, followed by Skaven, I think just hurt me in a way that it shouldn't have as a grown-ass man, because this is just a game and who cares, right? But I feel like, um, I feel like it did, and that's the, that's the reality of it. I'm just going to try and get my chat. Oh, Frank. Hey, Frank. How you going? Thanks for joining us, mate. Um, I'll put this chat over here where I'll be able to see it. Um, or not. Or will I not? No. Nope. All right. It'll just disappear whenever I, I do that. Still trying to work out how to buddy <coughs> do this stuff properly, to be honest with you. Yeah, so we'll go through. I don't know, Frank, if you've been listening to people about what they think about fourth so far. I'm just going to go back through the community page and have a look at what they've posted. Um, celebrate a new edition of Warhammer 25th of March. Let's see what this is all about. Um... Okay, Warhammer Age of Sigma fans in USA and UK will be able to try out the new edition for themselves this May. Okay, that's pretty close, which is good. Um, Alright, don't care about tournaments. <clears throat> right, yep. Alright, well that wasn't very useful. So next up, we've got Warhammer Age of Sigma. What? Exactly, are the mortal realms and who lives in them? No, nope, we don't care about that. Warhammer Age of Sigma, a new edition, everything you need to know. <coughs> I'm sure this won't be everything I need to know, but um, let's have a look anyway. So, hope it's been cast into ruin. Sigma plans to retake the mortal realms, Lion Tatters, the Skaven's plan to blah blah blah, Vermin Doom, that's good. Ah, uh, is that what the mortal corn feels like at the moment? Like Nurgle? <clears throat> you mean just resilient and tanky because of the high armor? Is that what you're talking about? I like my mortal corn. I haven't played much with them. I only had like, what, three or four games, I think, before my most recent hi hiatus, but I thought that was sick. All right. They just, is this a, uh, everything you need to know, is this an article that then links me to another article? It is. It's an article that links me to another article. Fuck, I hate it when they do this shit. Why do they do this? Story set, oh, wait. <clears throat> I feel like this is exactly what I read through last time. This is the same article, right? I've already been through. Yep, yeah, spearhead. Yep, yeah, this is exactly what I read through last time. What a fucking annoying... What a super fucking annoying... All right. What does new AOS mean for old battle terms? I'm sure there's new. Okay, there's this article and then this article. Well, this is just going to tell me that my old battle terms are shit, right? After 10 years of service, the rules of Age of Sigma are receiving the first go around and rewrite. I have to say, I'll be honest with you. Um, in hindsight, after I last re like reacted to the news and I was quite negative, I do have a lot more positives now. So I'm glad they're rewriting the whole game, to be completely honest with you because they just threw out like the first edition was just a bunch of random rules that were just thrown out ad hoc. Um, and the only reason it was, well, it wasn't even really that good. We sort of made it good. And the only bits that 
could make it good is because it was so simple. You could just have fun with it and find your own fun in it. And then they just started building on that. And so it was sort of like a really shitty foundation to start building on in the first place. So to go back and rewrite the whole game from scratch with intent and now with a better rules writing team, which they do, they have a better rules writing team now from what I know than what they did when Jervis and stuff was there. And it was just probably just Jervis, you know? Um, and yeah, he likes to start with his models half off the table. We know what he's all about. Lots of people don't like me to shit on him because he's like a legendary games writer of, of the eons. But um, I don't know. I think we've come... It's like Star Wars, right? You go back and you watch the old Star Wars and just because it's old and it's classic and I liked it when I was a kid doesn't mean it's good now. And I feel like that's like Jervis. Jervis was like Star Wars, right? Just, um, okay, cool, because he existed once upon a time, but now not there anymore. Fuck, I've done it already. I've been an asshole already. I'm sorry. But it's good. Like my point about that is that it's good, right? We, we want a rewrite and just write a really solid foundation of the rules now to build on and that'll be better for everyone. And I think it will be better. It will be a better foundation, a better basis. I'm, I'm confident of that. All right, all the War Scrolls are changing. The team took the opportunity at the outset to measure up each profile in every faction to see whether their basic stat line felt right. How does the Grot stack up against a mortal human? For instance, a Saurus and an Auric. Right. So they've gone through every war scroll and they've said, does this make sense? Does it stack up against the others? No. Let's fix it now and make sure that it does from the very beginning so the moment they release it, right? So we shouldn't be getting like damage one giants and stuff like that, right? Because they said they've just gone through and they fixed all that. They've made sure that wasn't a thing. So this is good, right? The thing is, is what they say they've done this and then my, my doom and darkness inside me doesn't believe that they've done it well enough or they've done it properly. Because I was thinking about this, I'm just gonna go straight to my fucking rant without even reading this. I can't hold it back. So I was thinking about this and I was thinking, all right, guys, um, obviously it's a company, right? So they have to make money and so forth. But I'm like, if you're going to rewrite the whole rules and you're going to uh, nullify every battle tome, well, here, and you're going to release uh, like new battle tomes or new codexes or new indexes, which have the rules for each different faction right now. Okay, well, here's your chance to balance the whole game from the beginning, from the very start, all at once, right? Like, in theory, if you put a good amount of effort into this, there would be no reason to release a new battle tome for any faction unless you release new miniatures with new rules, right? So in theory, when this game comes out and the indexes are released, we should have completely balanced Age of Sigma, right? because you've had a chance to go back and address everything. Like not completely, completely balanced. Um, if the balance is a rock, paper, scissor balance, I don't mind that at all. Like that's fine as well. <coughs> but in theory, if you were to, like what would be really shit is if they did this, they brought out the new game, they released the indexes, and then they just brought out, say, um, Blades of Corn Codex first, and then they changed the stats or the rules from the index into the battle tome without any new models associated with it. Because then you'd just be like, why? And then obviously you haven't then balanced this against everything else. And then we just end up in the shit cycle of releasing battle tomes to try and catch up. The index is being outdated and unbalanced. The new battle tomes being unbalanced until we get to the end of the cycle where now you've released everything and the older codexes are now unbalanced. You know what I mean? I'm just, I'm just like, in theory, you should just be able to release the game now and go, go for it, guys. Like, you've got all the rules. Everything's been balanced. We've done it all from the start. Like, away you go. And then if there's new armies, new models, and obviously release a new battle tome associated with it, things like that. But, like, 
that makes no sense for them to do it that way. No sense at all. It actually makes sense that they just release the game, make the indexes as boring as possible with very little in it, just basic stats so that you can go smash against each other and then release codexes with new fantastic rules in them. So you have to go buy codexes for your individual armies and it starts the arms race all over again. That's how I feel like it's going to happen, but I don't think it should. Um, let me see. Frank, what do you say? Don't really kill stuff in a brick wall yet. I feel like they saw the effect 10th had on 40k and are moving on to AOS. Hi, Patrick. Thanks for joining. Um, yeah, is, is 10th edition 40k good or not? I don't know. I keep buying the, the models and collecting the armies and stuff. Like, I just, I just, I'm like Dark Angels. I'm Dark Angels now, 100%. Um, I've always wanted like a Deathwing uh, army, like from when I first ever saw Warhammer and got into it. I'm like, it's perfect for me. I used to play Grey Knights with just all Terminators and it was amazing. It was such a fun way to play. Um, and now I'm like, I can do that with Dark Angels. So my Night Lords aren't even complete. And this is what happened with my Night Lords. Painting them was all good. And the army is probably three quarters complete. And then I have to add Raptors in to the army because it's Night Lords, right? So I got my Raptors. <laughs> and then when it came time to paint them, there's so much detail and a little finicky stuff on the Raptors that I just didn't want to blot in all the armor around it and then go back over it. And I just fucking gave up on painting the unit. And then because I gave up on painting those units, I don't even want to complete or play my Night Lords anymore. I'm just like, fuck it, time to move on to another army because Raptors are too hard to play. And then I'm like, if I'm going to play a 40k army without Raptors, well, I'll make it word bearers or something, you know? Um, yeah, I know, Patrick. It's sort of... In, in Like, I think, well, this is a great opportunity for them just to really focus and balance it from the start and really nail it. But I think they put more effort probably into... Um, they probably put a fair amount of effort into the base rules. Very little effort into the indexes because they know they're going to replace them all with new codexes. And then a lot of effort into spearhead, right? Because, and I, I don't... Um, I think they've got the right direction with Spearhead as far as, because every single edition, they've been constantly trying to bring out a new game that is faster paced, smaller, cheaper, um, easier to play. It's what everyone wants, right? Like it's, there's a huge demand for something like Spearhead. So I don't actually um, fault them for trying to nail that. And it has been a focus of them time and time again but they keep getting it wrong, I feel like. Like, I, I don't ever feel like... Like, I feel like Kill Team or War Cry or things like this have a little moment in the sun and you might have a very, very small niche community that are vocal and, and talk about, oh, I'm playing it at the moment and I really enjoy it. But I feel like they're super casual people and that when they say, oh, I really love it and I played it, like, maybe they had four games of it, you know, and that's it. I, I sort of... I've never seen a hardcore war cry community or a hardcore, like whatever the, the miniature, um, the mini battles game that was built into the, the last book was, um, I've never seen like some people talk about path to glory, like, and I sort of get that as well, but, um, I don't get it. Like I see very, very few people that are, that are that are enjoying the that have any longevity with these small games um but it's what i want right to be honest with you i do want spearhead to be absolutely fucking awesome um i'll talk to Spe about spearhead when i get there because i've thought about this as well and i'm just like fuck michael just be rainbows and skittles for this video you know like people <laughs> people people were seeking your negativity but i um I just always go there straight away. Um, but it, all I'm saying is I do want Spearhead to be good. And there, I think there is a huge demand for it. Um, I just I just don't have faith yet. Let's see. All right, let's see. War Scroll design has changed. 
as the kind of information goes on it. Some characteristics have been renamed for clarity. For example, wounds has become health. Yep. Miniatures can now fight in merely if they're within three inches combat range of opponents. Speeding up pylons and combat resolution. <coughs> Excuse me. And you can now contest an objective with a model within three inches of a 40 millimeter objective marker. So this is good, right? I don't have any problems with them renaming basic things or whatever, like I don't care about that. If they feel like for clarity um, or to help people from other systems um, look at something and it makes sense to them, you know, D&D &D players know what health is, you know, everyone knows what health is, like that's all good, no problems. Um, miniatures can now fight within three inches. Yes, like being cool and being edgy with your pylons and being well technically this one can pile in here and this one can pile in around here and this one can swing around here and can tag these ones. That's cool and it adds nuance to the game, which is awesome. But that's probably not where I'm at at the moment. I really just want to get like my ogres or my um, blood warriors and be like, yeah, charge and just like force them in and just be like, oh, yep, these ones are all within three. They can all attack. Right, that makes sense to me. Um, just make just make it simpler. Uh, the simpler it is, and the the less time in doing bullshit little crap, the better I think. <coughs> Excuse me. Overall, I really don't want like who wins the game to be based off um, how I'm um, actually technically speaking. You can be with your pylons. If that makes sense. <coughs> Fixes many armies hurt by the new coherency rules. Yep. Yep, I agree. Uh, smaller objectives. So, yeah, I'll be honest with you. Um, the giant, like, six-inch plastic see-through objective markers are really cool for the purposes of playing the actual game. And I actually don't really care about, like, oh, the immersion of this or whatever. <clears throat> But they're really fucking huge. Like you put down three on the four on the table and it's like, oh, no matter where I move my miniatures in some way, it's so easy to actually get onto an objective and contest it. And if I push like this unit here into the center objective, it's I'm literally a pile away from being able to capture the one on the right or the one on the left as well. So if those objectives are a little bit smaller, it makes movement more important, which I like because, you know, if you make the, the, the movement, the fun tactical part and not the pile in sort of situation, I think that's a better game. See, I'm being rainbows and skittles, guys. Like, I'm being happy. Universal rules are in. <clears throat> All right, a little bit of old world and also a little bit of 40K. Uh, there's a manageable amount, making them easy to recall. That's good. We don't want too much. Battle shock has been removed. So just taken away completely. That's what that says to me. Um, and there are meaningful command abilities every round with clear and simple sequencing. But if you want to use them, you'll need to deal with strict uh, command point economy. So this seems like exactly the same as, pardon me, um, what are they, 40k stratagems? Is that what they are? Where you go, oh, you've shot me and now I'm going to use this stratagem for two command points, which is going to allow me to return fire or blah, 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 and you just sort of save up your points and then you spend them sort of as you want them. That's what that sounds like to me. Um, Universal Special Rules in, I like. Uh, it should clean up the War Scrolls a little bit. Um, and also, it also helps, it, it also helps with the rules writing. It's easy for rules writers to make units be what they're meant to be, where they can say, oh, Croxigore. Proxigor always have crash and blow and blah, blah, blah. And every mon monstrous unit that we make for every book kind of has these same universal rules and that makes them fit this monstrous role. Um, so that's good because you don't end up, they don't end up fucking it up. <clears throat> Everything you can do in game is now an ability. All right, this is weird. Everything you can do in the game is now an ability from moving, fighting, shooting and casting spells to the unique actions found on your wall scrolls. These abilities have clear sequencing. A declare step, an effect step, and their timing is written out. 
color-coded and uses symbols, making it incredibly easy to understand at a glance which phase you can perform each, a each action in. Oh, so you like, I declare that my ogres are gonna walk six inches this way. I declare I'm gonna make them run. The effect step. Now I'm moving my guys. You, that That's written as stiff as fucking possible. There's probably something here I'm not, I'm not understanding. Um, but like, it seems like whatever. It seems a bit weird. Everything you can do in the game is now an ability. Maybe that's like an underlying, um, classification for rules writing and how things interact. I don't know. The modular nature of the new rule set is something we'll explain more about in due course, but essentially the core rules are supported by a series of more advanced plug and play options. If it's perfectly possible and quite satisfying to play without magic, for instance, while at higher levels, new battle packs and general handbooks can slot in the same way. Fuck me. Every current battle turn will be retired when the new edition drops, but every faction will receive a free downloadable faction pack shortly after release. Well, that'll be shit. Um, you know, they probably won't be for ogres. They'll probably be better than the book, better than the actual codex, I feel like. Just like in the same way, it was almost better to play with them, you know, before they had a... a, a what do you call battle time at all? This, okay, there's an article on it. So before I jump, um, let's just go have a look at that. What are the module rules and what do they mean for you? All right. So, what exactly does it mean? Uh, this, is, this is something that is going to piss me off if they fuck this up. Before I read this, right, the core rules are going to be everything. They're going to include magic and so forth. I feel like they probably should include terrain as well. And then they get chopped right there, right? And then anything other than that, as far as like um, battle tactics or stratagems or whatever, is all like add-ons, if they make it so that it's like the core rules and then magic's an add-on and then terrain's an add-on and then blah, 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 that'll just be retarded. <clears throat> yep, that's a good point. Andrew Frank says, could probably be for abilities that cancel each other out, strike first, strike last, say people arguing about things. That's as far as, yeah, abilities. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's see what they say. All right, the core rules are quick to learn and cover moving, fighting, shooting, unit coherency, and everything else you need to know to play a simple game from start to finish with objectives and terrain. All right, objectives and terrain, core rules, how you do stuff, good. The advanced rules covers commands, terrain, magic, armor composition, command models, and battle tactics. As any experienced player will tell you, these are all vital for in-depth tactical games of Warhammer Age of Sigmar. So what makes them, well, I'm fucking experienced player and I tell you they're not all fucking required. So you can go fucking eat that hat. Core rules, moving, fighting, shooting, unit coherency, commands. See, I feel, no. You know, cause there used to be the command phase where you use command abilities, right? So I feel like if this is modular now commands, that's been removed. Like the command phase has been removed. So you take the you, you take the command phase out, you put command abilities on war scrolls or just make them generic in indexes or generic in the core rules as a modular add-on. You get your command points and you use them like 40K stratagems, like at the time that you need to use them as opposed to in the command phase, you issue this command and then it you know, carries along for this turn or whatever. That seems fine to me, actually. 
In hindsight, yep, um, that actually seems fine to me. Um, and I think I like that. Yep. Yep, that's good. Terrain bolt on. See, I was hoping it wasn't like a... Uh, blah. I feel like they could have just put this in the core rules. Army composition core rules. Command models. Battle tactics. <laughs> I feel like the only thing that they needed to be as a bolt on is just the battle tactics. And they could have included all this in the core rules and just left that out. But... I get it. I guess it's easy enough to probably incorporate them and add them on. And I guess it will probably just be standard for, I know for everyone that I play with, it'll just be like it's core rules plus command strain, magic, army composition, probably yeah, command models. And do you want to play the battle tactics or not? And the more you play Age of Sigma, you probably will want to use the battle tactics if they're balanced and they're well thought out, if they're not retarded. Um, but if, you know, you're kind of a bit rusty and you just want to come back and have a game, whatever, you might just leave them off and that's fine. Um, so it doesn't actually seem that bad. Oh, fuck, I made it through without, like, going off on some retarded fucking negative rant. Rules have been structured in a modular manner, says Ben, the product developer for the game. Who is that, Ben? Is that Ben we know? This means that you can learn and play games with the core, core rules. And then when you need them, you can go and learn the advanced rules. Yep, I think that's good too. Yep, that's good too. Though some battle packs will require them. It's all part of making the game that existing players love more accessible than new players. And I think that's good. <coughs> Matt's in charge of the rules. All right, Matt. The last map was Matt Ward, right? Everyone hated him for just releasing overpowered battle tomes. Let's see if Matt can continue the Matt, the Matt legacy. Yeah, that all seems good and fine. No problems. All right, here we go. With modular rules, you only need to read the rules necessary to play the game you want. To play Spearhead, all you need to read is the core rules, no advanced rules, everything else is covered in the Spearhead battle pack, the War Scroll cards, and the unique cards that Spearhead uses. This is exactly what I was talking about. All right. Okay, so Spearhead is just that. Sweet. Path of Glory. Yep. Yeah. Match play. And then General's Handbook. And good. Seasonal rules. I can... Oh my god. I don't want seasonal rules. Like, I think that's shit. Or if it's a season, I want a long season. I don't want seasonal rules. This is... All right. New AOS. System means that everything outside the core rules is plug and play. Yep, we've talked about that already. Um... Current General's Handbook is set in Antor, Andor, and focus on magic. All right, but in practice, it ends up being a little bit awkward for newer players because the rules are split between primal magic rules at the beginning of the book and the standard magic rules NG with even the core rules. Yep, I agree with all that. Um, we could simply replace the magic module entirely with a magic of Andor module, for as an example. This would be seamless to integrate the thematic. Yep, okay, sure. Yep, and we don't want core rules, errata, and layers on top. Yes, that's, I agree. That's excellent. Well done, Matt. Uh, there are also other benefits. We find out during the course of a season of match play that the economy of command points isn't quite right for competitive play. You've already practiced this and play tested it when you wrote these rules, so you already know it is right for competitive play. So what you've just told me is you already don't think it's right, or you don't know if it's going to be right or not. I guess you never do know anything is right till you put it to the market and you truly test it, right? I guess that goes for more things than just games. Um, goes for pharmaceuticals and all sorts of stuff, but like, I don't know, man. All right. <laughs> it's just the negativity of me coming out again. Um, we don't need to issue an errata online. Instead, we could have a general's handbook with a new command module that is both... Th no, you can't. No, that's stupid. That's both thematically resonant and helps improve the internal balance. If you want to bring that advanced rule module pack in the future, we can. No, because now you're going to release like a new module 
and say this module like don't mix the modules so don't have a seasonal module pack which then rewrites the, the magic module or rewrites the command module either because if you want to fix something in the core and you're just going to release a new module and say this replaces this with that but as a new player i'm like well i don't want to play with any advanced rules and i don't want to play with seasonal rules so i'm not even going to look at that so i just use the original stuff but it hasn't been fixed or errated or anything um, just guys, just get it right the first time. Like that's all I can say, like really, really try and get it right because um, I can already tell this is going to be fucked. They're going to, they're going to, they're going to release, they're going to release so many modules to try and fix the other modules, which they've got wrong. And they're going to say, just replace this module with this module. And then they're going to say, well, we were going to release one module, which replaces three different modules. And this season, seasonal module will do magic, it'll do terrain, and it'll do the command points or something. And then they're going to release that, and then they're going to have to FAQ it. Oh, fuck. Shit. Don't, I don't, don't be negative. It's fine. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. The potential for the system is huge. Yeah, the potential to fuck it up is huge as well, guys. You know, with what is it? With great power comes great responsibility. Yeah, you're like, oh, this can be so great because we can do all these things. The more things that you can do is the more ways that you can fuck it up, all right? And we're right to be jaded about this because we still remember when the Skaven book first came out and when Zench first came out, all right? I haven't received my personal written apology from Games Workshop for that yet. So I'm gonna fucking carry this fucking chip off my shoulder to my grave. And my Ogre's book wasn't OP, so I fucking hold you for that too. All right. The team has plenty of ideas on how to shake, this might shake things up in the future. And you'll see from the start of the new edition how it works in practice tomorrow. We'll be back with a look at one of the most exciting and unique aspects of Warhammer Age of Sigma, a tactical twist known as a priori role. Uh, okay. Where can I see that? New AOS. Uh, new AOS. How modular are these new rules? Is that not what I just read? No. Yep, 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 yep. Right, didn't they say they'll be back tomorrow? Um, when was that article out? The 28th. So, yeah, so what, are they bringing out something today? I don't know, guys. Um, I probably don't think it's that bad, to be honest with you. I'm going to stay positive for it. I think the principle of everything that they're trying to do here is good and 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 well needed and fantastic. I my thing is always just in um, you know, but I was thinking about this to be fair as well, so I'm not being a dickhead. I was like, when ever, Michael, does a system get released, and not even a game system? Think about a an occupational health and safety system or a manufacturing process, or anything within your work, right? Because one thing that, um, you know, someone wrote in a, a comment previously, they sort of said, oh, I think they've done a, the, the rules rise have done a really good job so far, right? And I'm being negative for no reason. Dang. Rumor is taking double turn will mean you can't score battle tactics or objectives. Yeah, that's cool. I like that idea. You get a chance to absolutely wipe your army out. But see, oh, it, it really does depend on, I mean, how that plays out, Frank, is really going to depend on how well they balance and what the power level of all the new units are when they come out. So if we live 
in a game and a meta when every time one of your units attacks my unit it's simply a game of all right you buff up your mega unit and then you go into my unit and then you just destroy it right and if you can do that with say two units at once um, and then you combine that with always strikes first or something similar then it just means that if you have the turn you know because we only have say each player has approximately six units on the table you have the turn you can go buff up two of your units straight away and just go in and delete mine then straight away it's a it's a game of four to six um or even if you can delete three units at a time you know because some sometimes those other units of your six aren't big units they're only small little you know chaff screens or whatever so sometimes in age of sigma you can just in one normal round right it's not a double turn or anything you can go in and delete half your opponent's army or you can just completely gut it because things can get powered up and the damage is so high that it's it's so hard to 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 defend against it you know there's there's none of this it's very rare that you have a, a scrum where it's like oh you attack then i get to attack back and now it's balanced and then you attack again and then i attack again and oh this is a really good fight who's going to win most of the time it's who positions right and then who's able to stack the right amount of buffs and then throw it at your enemy and blow blow them up and when it's a game like that the only way to keep the game fun or entertaining sometimes is to allow that double turn where then you as the player that only has three units left by having two turns back to back can buff your guys up and you can swing it back again <clears throat> so if the game is still just like oh it's a game of massive damage and just instant deletion of units if taking the double turn means that you can't score battle tactics or anything like that then it just it'll actually fuck the game completely because your ability to to get back into the game will be taken from you um yeah for a large degree like so but if 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 it's not like that you know so if they like you think about the damage in in aos one first edition age of sigma not everything like things didn't blow up like they did there was no like doing you know 20 mortal wounds or anything like that it was literally i keep going back to this analogy but four star soul maces in a unit of of paladins was like the most op thing in the game right you know, and then they brought out like a Maw Crusher. <laughs> and he was awesome too. But the old Maw Crusher is not like the new Maw Crusher. You know, there's there's different levels to that power. So the ability to do, you know, what? Six mortal wounds and then plus normal damage on top was literally the most like damaging OP thing in the game. Um, so in a game like that, you know, changing the double turn, I think is fine like that. But if you keep the damage level the same as what it is now, you know, because I, 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 that's that's one thing that I, I can see them not really thinking about as well, is where they reset this power level to, because they have to allow for like there's been ten years of power creep, and people have always said oh power creep's not a thing. Well, some people have said I don't agree with power creep. You know, there's no evidence for it because each battle time isn't you know better than the last. But every edition, every year, as the battle times have come out, generally the damage has just gone up and up and up and up and up you know um so it'll be interesting to see if when they reset the game and the rules whether they reset all the damage as well and you think about it people are going to spit chips like if they're if your annihilators go from damage three to damage two but everything else has been scaled appropriately appropriately as well then it will be a good change but people will be like oh you just everyone will just be whinging because they'll say oh you just nerfed my stuff <laughs> so i don't think they will do that I think they'll probably keep it like it is now. It's just huge. Yeah. Um, what else did I want to talk about? Oh, so Spearhead. So I really do hope Spearhead's going to be good. Um, but I think the only way they can do that is if it's meant to be this battle box is a balanced Spearhead, um, is balanced for Spearhead and every battle box is balanced, right? You need to actually do that independent of Age of Sigma, the game itself. So this rules for your units in Spearhead can't be the same as your rules for units in Age of Sigma because the rules in Age of Sigma and the points and everything are constantly going to change. 
And if you're changing the, then all the units and everything in spearhead at the same time, it's just not going to be a balanced game in like two seconds. Right. I even think that like their ability to release balanced spearhead boxes from the start, they've never, they've never even done it with a starter box. Every time, every starter box that's ever been brought out, you get those initial um, models that are included and you put them and you play through the scenarios and it's just a complete one-sided like slaughterhouse one way or another, like every single time. So they've never been able to do this in the past. So what makes me think that they're going to be able to do it now? Now, I don't want them to, because to be honest with you, if I could just get a spearhead box, it came comes with all the rules and everything. My son has it too. He's 11. And I say, okay, bing, bang, a bonga. Let's go. Let's play. What force do you want to play? And he says, I'm going to choose my this faction spearhead. And I'm going to go, I can choose this faction spearhead. It's way easy for us to have multiple different spearhead armies. You know, it's easy to have 10 spearhead armies than just have 10 whole Age of Sigma armies. And then you can have a game in, I hope it's like an hour or even less. Like that would be excellent. That would be really, really cool. Um, because one thing I find at the moment personally is like, I, I would, I would make spearhead battle reports. If it was a balanced, if it was like age of Sigma, but just mint a little bit scaled down. So it was quicker. It was nuanced and it was fast to play. I would probably switch to making spearhead, um, battle reports and only playing spearhead to be honest with you, because setting up a table filled with terrain, writing your army list, um, transporting everything around record it's such a fucking chore it's so much fucking work like when i went and had that game with uh Willsy the other day that game took five hours and we didn't even use all the rules um and i don't think either of us really thought we were playing that slow like there were some interruptions and we're talking a little bit of shit and stuff but like it just takes so fucking long and if you want to attract like a larger audience of people Man, it's only the most diehard that are going to give up. Like, I, I can't do that. Like, I can't get up, hang out with my son, like, go train in the morning, come back, have a shower, you know, and then go, oh, I'm going to go play, um, you know, Warhammer and, like, be late for taking my girlfriend out for dinner or something like that because, you know, a game could go from three hours to five hours or whatever and I have to travel, like, you know, a year and a half for a game. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's, you just, I feel like people that aren't just fully, fully like immersed in it. And that's the only thing they're planning the whole weekend. Just really find it hard to, to fit in a game like that. If Spearhead's awesome, like, fuck yeah, I'll come around. We get a game in an hour. I don't have to write my list every time or anything like that. It's just rock, paper, scissors between the, the different battalions. I think that'd be really cool. I just don't think, I just don't have confidence in their ability to do it because um, I'm probably just talking in circles now. I've said this before, but that's sort of where I'm at with that anyways. So yeah, um, I mean, overall, I'm not super negative. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not super negative about the new edition. Um, I'm super positive and supportive of it, right? Um, don't take my complaining the wrong way because I think everything that they're aiming to achieve is really positive. Um, oh, you know what I forgot? I, I fucking bailed on my original. I'm just ranting. I bailed on my original sort of comment. So there's no system. Oh, yeah. This person was saying I'm complaining too much and um, he thinks they've done a really good job. And I sort of wrote as a response. I was like, well, what's your, your unit of measure to say they've done a good job? Right. And then I think to myself, well, I might use my professional life right versus their rules writing as if they've done a good job so if someone was to write a report right about something um that we were paying for and i was to read that report i wouldn't actually care if there were say formatting errors or there were typos or anything like that um it would be better if they proofread it better. And I like I make those mistakes. I submit things to companies and it's got problems in it and errors and stuff. So like who am I? And I'm I'm but I'm a bit of a dumbass. So I think these people are probably smarter than me, to be honest with you. <clears throat> but if I submit a report 
And then I say, you know, and it recommends doing this or operating this way. And then I say, actually, I've made a mistake and I want to rewrite all of this stuff in that report. That's not really an acceptable or professional way to behave. Um, you can write something and then say, I got it wrong, right? You say, oh, actually, that's what I thought and I got it wrong, that's fine. But then to just like sort of rewrite it and yeah, I, I, you sort of strive not to do that. However, saying that you never get, if, you, if you're doing a system, which I think a game is more like, like if you're writing an OH&S policy, you write the policy, right? based off best practice and what other companies have done and what's proven and, and common sense and whatever else, maybe less common sense. And then once you put it into practice, you find out that there are things in it that need to get changed and updated. And you do that, right? You release updates constantly and it's constantly evolving. So it's, it's not really fair to expect Games Workshop to just get it right straight off the bat. I'll be honest with you, it's probably not really fair because in our own professional lives, we actually probably very rarely do that ourselves. Um, the, the, the issue is though, is that when someone does release something, a system, you want it to be a, a good and, and quite robust system to start with that, that seemingly works. And then when you change something to, for, to improve it, which we all, we're always doing continuous improvement, you're really just changing one thing and then it's easy for everyone to incorporate and understand quite quickly. And then after that's been incorporated, then you can introduce something else. You know, the constant introduction of, of updates and changes and, and correction is like a, a sign that you've done a shit job to start with. So that's probably what I wanted to say is just that I think, I think it's okay for it not to be a perfect system upon release. And it's probably unfair to expect that because the truth is I can't do that myself personally, right? And if you think you can, you know, you think I'm so good in my profession and I hold things to such a high standard that, in, you know, if I write a new system for work or a new policy, right, I get it right every time and I never have to update it or never have to correct anything or never, there's never an unforeseeable circumstance that, you know, I didn't, I didn't foresee. I would say you're fucking pulling your dick, right? And that's not true at all. Um, or I'd be telling you probably get your head out your ass. Um, because in my experience, there's, that's not real. Um, so I have to remind myself of that, right? Because I'm a negative prick. And sometimes I start thinking like, oh, fuck this, you know, I'm like it's just shit and they're going to get it wrong and blah, blah, blah. Um, but I really need to cut them some slack and not really harp on about that too much. So I'm going to try and remind myself of that when we move forward and um, it might rename the channel to Doom and Rainbows or some shit like that, I feel like. All right, would you say, Frank, you said, I think the 40K version of this had this issue. Some boxes just didn't match to others. Yeah, like after everything I just said about cutting them some slack, 100%, that's going to be the case. Like 100%. And it, it's not so, but I don't like... It's not so bad, Frank, if it's, um, oh shit. Okay. If I'm going to play Nurgle and you're going to play and you've chosen Stormcast, you've just hard picked a counter to my Nurgle, but I know that my Nurgle is a hard counter to, you know, these different other types of deck, you know, more like a magic, the gathering sort of structure where it's like a rock, paper, scissors. I don't actually mind if it's like that, where you do get really big mix mismatches because some armies are hard counters to other armies. I don't mind that at all. I don't think that's what they will try to go for though. I think they'll go to try to go for a, I guess a, a composition, but you see, they're not, they're not designing I'm like a hundred percent. They're not designing the Vanguard boxes with the rules in mind. Right, they're just getting like a handful of models that seemingly looks cool. Like they're not going, oh, you know what would be cool? Um, we we're gonna make a Vanguard box of this, this, and this, and this, because the rules that we've got for them makes a really balanced set. That's not what they're doing. They're just gonna take the existing boxes that they've got and then what's planned, and they're gonna go and try and go, oh, well, how can we write rules for this, which is gonna be kind of semi-balanced? 
and they're going to try and do it with this mix max of match of different like styles of units and shit like that and it's going to be really really difficult for them um so that's a shame that's a shame to be honest with you but um yeah i hope it fucking i hope it's good and i hope it works hey let me ask you a question i think i don't know who's here let me see if i've got a a way of seeing who's here i don't even know if i do or not but um uh what do i want to say i want to say put one in the chat if you're actually watching because i'm such a noob at this i don't even know how many people are watching at the moment um there is a method but the question i want to ask is i recorded a um i watched space kings i don't know if you guys know what space kings is um it's a flash gits animation right flash gits is like a, a company a group which have made like a, a bunch of funny animations in the past like taking the piss out of gw and whatever else and um yeah i watched it and i recorded a reaction to it the first time i was watching it because um i mean i was going to watch it anyway so i thought fucking why not right and um fuck it's good and it's 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 really good like you should go watch it it is funny as fuck but i've never put up like reaction videos like that before you know it's something that a lot of other people who make content will do um and i've never really put them up and and like I, like it's excellent to watch um it's really fucking funny and um and i thought i i, I, I kind of want to share this with people right because it's fun but then I haven't uploaded it because I thought, oh, like, I don't know. You know, it's just not what I've done in the past or whatever. But I don't mind doing it, to be honest with you, and doing it in the future more. Because, to be honest with you, like, fucking hell, if I'm going to watch something super cool that I kind of want to share, like, that's sort of Warhammer orientated or whatever, well, I may as well, like, just react to it or something like that. Um, you know, you get to watch it and I get to watch it. It's kind of like we all get to watch it together, I think, which is kind of fun. So anyways, let me know if you reckon I should upload that or not. Um, I was going to upload it to the members only section. Yep. And um, thanks to my member. Boom. I've got, I've got, Mr. Binko is my one member. Only one solid hardcore member um, on board at the moment. He gets personalized content delivered to him. Um, so maybe, maybe I should just upload it there. I don't know. Tell me what you think anyways. In the comments or in the chat, uh, I think everyone's left now. I'm all alone in here. But that's it. So I'll probably just finish there. Um, finish the stream there, I think. Go put away my washing, right? Do the rest of my house chores. Good stuff like that. But I'm, I'm excited for this. I'm looking forward to it, right? I'll just re reiterate, reiterate that. Um, guys, hit the membership. Um, join up there. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. I am staying positive for this. I am looking forward to it. And I think it's going to be better than what we have at the moment. And we really do need a refresh as well. And it would be super good to kick off the channel again and kick off, um, just kick it all off and fire it all up based off a whole new edition. So this is excited. I can sort of ramp up to it. Um, yeah, just forgive my negative, my, my cynicism, right? But it's kind of my personality. And it's what this channel's always been, you know, this channel grew to what it is, not because I was like fucking rainbows and Skittles, but because I was honest, right? Like straight up, I'm the original Honest Wargamer. I'm just going to say it now, right? When Rob was working for Games Workshop, sitting on a stool, talking about how good the fucking battle tones were, when he was commentating for them live and getting paid to do it, right? Channels like me were out there telling them that they were full of shit, right? The first Honest Wargamer, well, not the first, but one of the first, right fucking here, right? And so that's what the channel always was. It was always just me. And then along the lines, I lost my way a bit, right? I started to, I started to care about um, getting a Games Workshop sponsorship. You know, I started worrying about um, trying to grow the channel to have a bigger channel. So I started to moderate my language. I started to really kind of become, well, I kind of became involved in the community because that's just how it evolved and whatever else. But, um, you know, instead of just saying what I fucking thought, right, and I, I, I started to say, oh, no, don't be like that. Don't be Mr. Negative. Don't be whatever, you know. And, um, and then it stopped becoming fun for me, and I didn't want to do it anymore. But the truth is, like, 
being doom and darkness and having the channel is fucking fun when I'm being myself and doom and darkness, you know, like, so that's just what I'm going to be. And there's a whole portion of the Warhammer community, which is not that right. They're fucking Skittles and rainbows. They're all about feelings and cuddles and molly coddle and just like being supportive, like super supportive, toxically fucking supportive. Right. And anyone that sort of is like, you know, against that grain, you know, they're just like, no block fucking unsubscribe, like negative comment, like whatever. And I don't give a fuck about any of that shit, to be honest with you. Um, but those people are not, I'm not going to appeal to those people at all anymore. I'm not even going to try. I'm not going to intentionally try to like fucking exclude anyone or offend anyone or anything like that. Like that's not my goal, but, um, yeah, like I'm just going to be honest and be myself. If you don't fucking like it, you know, go jump in a lake. It's basically the way of it. So yeah, that's it folks. Um, I don't even know where that little bit at the end came from, but, um, if you want some good old fashioned fucking doom and darkness, hit the thumbs up and we'll finish up there. So thanks Frank and Patrick for joining the chat. And, um, 